I'm going to show you all how I do my crock pot roast meal so as you can see here I have my meat this is a shoulder beef roast I purchased this from my local grocery store a couple of weeks ago so if the packaging looks a little wet and wrinkled that's because I froze it and I just took it out of the freezer today I placed it in the sink in a pan of cool water for about an hour until it thawed out now I'm ready to go ahead and rinse it and season it I'm going to slice up this onion after I season it, and I'm going to actually season it with seasoning salt, black pepper, garlic powder, and I like to use chicken bouillon cubes. To me, it gives it a little extra added, added flavor and makes it a little more savory, especially since I'm going to be cooking it in some water overnight. So let's get started. See, I went ahead off camera and I cleaned and seasoned my roast as well as peeled and sliced my onions. With the roast, you'll notice that whenever you have a thick cut of beef, it requires a lot of seasoning to give it a good savory flavor. If you have hypertension or for whatever reason you cannot have a lot of sodium, please do not overdo it with your salts and seasoning. With me, I've been doing this for a while so I didn't measure it out. I just kind of know by hand how much seasoning I like to put on there to acquire the taste that I want. So you can most definitely season it by taste. So if you do season it and you let it cook and you feel that it needs a little bit more seasoning, you can always add more seasoning to it. But to add more to it later than to have too much and it to be too salty so with me i put a thick coat of the seasoning salt on both sides as well as a thick coat of the garlic powder on both sides with the black pepper i put a thin coat because black pepper can be very powerful and i don't want this to be spicy some of my children are young and they don't like spicy foods and that's not the flavor technique that i'm going for with this roast on today so now that i have both sides seasoned and my onions sliced and peeled I will show you in my crock pot. I have a rather large size crock pot. It's a Cuisinart. I put it on high. I put it on eight hours. That's the highest setting because I am going to let this cook overnight. I already have this plugged up and on, so you'll see my light is orange. Now, before I put anything in there, even though I did do a nice generous seasoning on my meat, I also put a little bit of seasoning into the crock pot, the same seasonings, the seasoning salt, black pepper, garlic powder, and I put two cups of water in there. So now I'm going to go ahead and add my roast in. And now that I have the roast in, I'm going to use this knife and I'm going to stab just a few holes in it. I'm going to add my onions. And my bouillon cubes. I have three of them. Most of the time I use four, but I only have three left. So I'm adding those three in there. And I am going to cover it with my top, pot top that I have here. I took the handle off so that way it can kind of steam and breathe some. And I'm actually going to add one more cup of water in there. The reason why I added more water is, and the reason why I added more seasoning even in the water is because I want not only my beef 
to be well seasoned and have a savory flavor but i want the broth to have a very rich savory flavor because i want to use that broth later so that i can make a homemade gravy so i want it to have a good seasoned flavor on my broth so again this is set on high it is set on eight hours i want to let this cook overnight and we will check it in the morning to see what progress has been made so now that the roast has cooked overnight we are going to take a peek at it look at that roast it is completely done it is tender and it's falling apart as i am stirring it it's glands Ooh. Thing trying to fog on my camera, <laughs> but yeah, that looks good. So now we are going to make some gravy. So now I'm going to make the homemade gravy to go on to the roast that we cooked. For my ingredients, I'm going to use some white all purpose flour. I want to use the same seasonings that I use for the roast, which is seasoning salt black pepper and garlic powder i already have my eye on and it's hot my skillet is on the eye and it is hot i'm going to start off by using some vegetable oil i make sure i pour, pour in enough to coat the pan and then just a little extra we're going to let that get hot Open up this flour and get it ready and prepared. And I'm going to turn this skillet up to medium high heat. Because I want to make a lot of gravy, that's why I put in the amount of vegetable oil that I did use. And that's why I'm using a large skillet. So, so far I have put in six forkfuls of flour. And I know that that's not going to be enough. I need to make this almost like a thick roux texture. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Put in one more for ten. I'm gonna go ahead and mix this in. Make sure that the oil blends in perfectly with the flour. large forkfuls that would have given us 12 large forkfuls of flour the more flour you add the thicker it will be the more broth liquid or water you'll need to add to it to be able to get your gravy the consistency that you want This here is the texture that I'm looking for. You see that? So I'm going to keep this on medium high heat because I need this mixture to warm up. But in the meantime, I'm going to add my seasoning. Yesterday when we were doing the roast, I talked about not using a lot of pepper unless you're going for the spicy effect, but using a lot of seasoning to give it flavor. Water and oil has no flavor at all, so you do want it to have a lot of flavor, but of course you don't want it to be salty. 
And then you want to keep in mind too, if you're going to be using a broth from a seasoned meat or some type of stock that already has seasoning in it, you don't want to make this mixture too salty because you're going to add something else in here that's going to be salty as well. So as I'm mixing this, this is starting to brown. So I want this to get a dark brown, not brown, but a dark brown. That way when I add the liquid in, it always becomes one or two shades lighter. And I want my, my gravy to have a pretty caramelized brown mixture color. Let that sit for just a minute while I go ahead and get some of the broth from the roast so I can have it ready to go in. to you guys, but it's not that. It's that dark brown that I want it to be. And I want to turn this down just a little. That dark brown. I'm going to take it off the fire for just a second. I took that down. And now I have broth. This has some meat particles in it as well as um, the onions that we added to the roast yesterday. So I wanted to take it off the fire only because I didn't want it to get any hotter and brown before I added my mixture. So now that I have added the raw, you can see how it makes the mixture thicken up. And we want to blend all of that together really, really nicely. Now, usually I'll make sure that I add enough broth or liquid or even hot water to make sure that it gets a certain thin, not a watery thin, but a thin consistency. But I have more broth in the crock pot with the roast. So I just wanted this to get just thick enough to where it blends and doesn't stick. And I'm going to pour this into the crock pot with the roast. So, let's go. Now we're going to add the partially thickened gravy mixture to the roast beef with the remaining broth and onions that are in here. I wanted to tell you guys, too, on yesterday, I did not cut the fat off of my roast. I left it on there to help absorb and give flavor to the beef. And as I stir it, if I see any excessively fat pieces of, large pieces of fat, I will pull them out. But I like to leave the fat on to give a, to help lock in the flavor. Oh yeah, this is good. It's good and thick. I want this to be able to cook in and be able to soak in there together. Let the meat cook just for a little bit with the gravy with it. Now here, see, this is an example of a large piece of fat, so I'm going to take this and I'm going to throw this out. Scavenger through here just a little bit to see if I see any more large pieces of fat. And I'll see one more here.
another piece here. See that fat? Now see the seasonings and broth will be absorbed by the fat and with the fat being onto the meat, it not only helps in tenderizing, but also locking in the flavor. And it helps blend the flavor with the broth. So now all I have to do is make some rice, a vegetable, and some biscuits. And we will be able to easily sop this roast beef up with the gravy, some rice, some biscuits. That's going to be good. Let me go ahead and prepare my sides and then I'll show you guys the finished product. So we have some white rice. We would have had brown rice, but it seems like everybody else loves it just as much as we do. We have some seasoned green beans here. I already fed the kids, so it's a little skimpy. And then we have the roast beef with the gravy. So we're gonna fix our plate. Slice cut up onion and the string beans. We're just gonna put this roast with the gravy right on top of this rice. So we didn't have to add any salt or pepper or sugar to it. And top it off with a flaky grains biscuit. Ta-da! Happy feeling.